Hey everyone, Bradley Jack Design here, and in this video I'm going to show you my technique of clipping out a player from a scene and removing the background. Clipping out an athlete is an everyday occurrence for most sports designers, so I hope this method shows you a possibly easier way than how you currently clip out an athlete. I will also include a little trick I like to use in order to make sure that the player isn't floating in your final design. The first thing we need, as always, is a high quality image. So take this image of Bryce Harper and make whatever edits you need before pulling it into Photoshop. If you want to learn how to edit a sports image like I do, check out my tutorial on editing sports images in Lightroom. Once we have the edited image in Photoshop, it's time to clip. First, take the pen tool and throw it in the trash. Dust your hands off for a job well done because the pen tool is overrated. Instead of the pen tool, we will be using a combination of the quick select tool and the select and mask tool. This method does not require dealing with finicky anchor points and confusing geometry. Instead, we'll make a broad selection and fine tune it in order to get our masked athlete. First, click on the quick select tool or hit W. Make sure you have the quick select tool selected and not the magic wand. With this tool, simply click and paint around what you want to select. So in this case, Bryce Harper's body. Try and paint it so the marching ants form around the outside of his body. This will be the base of our selection. I generally zoom in and make sure I have the player outlined fully. If your selection is outside of what you want, you can hold down the Alt or Option key to unselect any area you want. Go around the outside of the athlete until the whole player is selected. This doesn't have to be exact, we're going to tweak this selection in the Select and Mask window. With your final selection created, click the Select and Mask button at the top. Make sure you have the Quick Select tool selected in order for this button to appear. Within this window, you will see everything within your outline uncolored, and everything that is colored will not be selected. I have my color set to magenta, because if you're clipping something in a red jersey, magenta is easier to use. On the right side of the window, you can fiddle with the opacity of the unmasked area, adjust the edge detection and global refinements. I like to set the radius to 1 with Smart Radius selected. The Smart Radius will automatically adjust the selection to the image's edges. As for the global refinements, we want to smooth out part of our selection a tiny bit, so I usually make this 3. We don't want to feather because we want a tight mask on the player. Set the contrast to 25, which increases the contrast of the selection's edge, and shift the edge negative 3%. This will contract the selection edge by 3%. This will make sure you don't have any white fringes or black fringes around the player. With these numbers plugged in, it's time to refine the selection. On the left hand side, there are two tools we will mainly use, the Refine Edge Brush and the Brush Tools. You can use Refine Edge to paint along the edge of your selection. If it is a high contrasting area, this brush will deselect what it thinks is not part of the selection. So in this case, Bryce's jersey contrasts heavily against the dugout, so it'll make sure the dugout is unselected. Take some real time to check the selection around the whole image. The Refine Edge Brush is a good tool to use around hair, so if a player has complicated hair, use this tool to get a good selection of what is and isn't hair. The brush tool can be used in most other areas with good success. Make sure that there aren't any corners that aren't sharply selected. You can always paint in more of what won't be selected and go back and erase along corners in straight lines to maintain a sharp corner. Remember, holding Alt or Option will paint color which means that part will not be part of the selection. I think it's helpful to always have a finger on the Alt or Option key to easily paint and erase parts of the selection. It also helps to use shortcut keys to adjust the brush size. You can use the bracket keys to increase and decrease the brush size. This will allow you to get a more refined detail in your selection. Once you have everything around Bryce painted that you don't wish to select, we can hit OK. But before we do this, I want to explain the Decontaminate Colors selection. If you select this, it'll make sure the edges don't have any contamination of color, like green from grass in the background. I don't like using this tool because it's a bit destructive on your imagery and there's a better way to decontaminate the image where you have more control. I'll show you this after we mask out our player. When you hit OK, you will see then your image with the marching ants around it, which is the selection we just created. In order to make sure we do not have any fringe or white or black, the last thing we're going to do before creating the mask is hit Select, Modify, Contract. This will allow us to tell Photoshop to contract the selection however many pixels we want. I generally just choose one pixel because anything more might delete some hair or it might make the image look in general weird. 
After we have contracted the selection, hit the Add Mask button at the bottom of the Layers panel. It's the third button. Now we have a mashed out image of Bryce Harper that we can place into a design. This image does not have much contamination, but we can see on the knee he has a bit of brown from where he either has dirt on his knee or it's a mild reflection. My suggestion on how to change this to match his pants is to create a separate layer, mask it to the layer below it by holding down Alt or Option, and clicking in between the two layers. This will mask the top layer to the clipped image. Set this layer to Hue and paint over the areas with a soft brush the color you wish to change the brown to. In this case, with the brush tool selected, I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key, which will temporarily bring up the eyedropper tool. You can then select part of Bryce's pants and paint the color on top of the brown. I use this method for any part of the player I want to decontaminate. You can do this on arms, helmets, shoes, whatever you want. If you're placing the subject into a scene that's not a standard field, this is a good way to make sure that there aren't any random colors around the edges of the player that don't match the scene you place them into. Now in order to make sure the player does not look like they're floating in the design, save out two versions of this file. Save one file with the clipping applied to Bryce, and save one without the clipping and the decontamination layer. Essentially what we started with before we dropped the image into Photoshop. Now when you are ready to place the image into a design, you can drop both images at once. The reason we're going to do this is to maintain the natural shadows that are in the image. With both the images in your design, create a gradient map of black and white and clip it to the unmasked image. Adjust the settings so the image is predominantly white with only the shadow remaining. You can then set the unmasked layer to multiply to make this layer a shadow layer. Mask out any other dark areas of the image or mask the image entirely and paint back in parts of the shadow you actually want to keep. This is a good way to make sure your image is grounded and the natural shadow remains in your final design. This method of maintaining shadows works for all sports, not just someone on the ground. It works well to keep natural shadows of players dunking, or a ball in the air for say a soccer player, or hockey players shadows on ice in regards to the painted lines. It's important to note that if you place the natural shadows in your design to make sure that whatever light source you create or any flares you put in your design, that they accurately represent a light source. So if your shadow is in the bottom left of a player, make sure your light source is in the top right so it looks realistic. This is the clipping method I use for all my images. The pen tool is fine and dandy if you want to use it, but since you will likely be using the selected mask tool to refine the edge of selection, you might as well make a quicker general selection and fine tune it with the select and mask tool. I hope this video gave you some insight into how I clip a player before I place them into a design. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and if you have any suggestions on tutorials you want to see, comment below. Thanks.